So we live on a planet that has a number of peculiarities. Yeah, it's a rectangle, and there's a lot of fucking hills. And these peculiarities we have somehow uh, rationalized, we have somehow come to terms with, or we have somehow diminished the, 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 the difference between things, that these peculiar, these peculiar things that we have in our lives, in our culture, on our planet. Sure, but you can't blame people for that. It's pretty easy not to think about them most of the time, except when you wake up and you realize all your socks are covered in slime and your toothbrush smells like an alien's taint. So for example, we have computers, we have digital processors, we have microchips, which uses miniature scale technology and software, right? to create artificial intelligence. And on the other hand, we have uh, gasoline vehicles and we still use fire to cook our food, right? Are you genuinely asking me? Because if you are, I'll tell you. Why, yes, we do have computers and gas-powered cars. They work pretty well for us, except for some somewhat pressing issues in the latter case that we're gradually dealing with, but no. I don't use fire to cook my food. I use an electric stove with a ceramic cooktop. I have an electric barbecue, and sometimes if I'm feeling really fancy, I'll even use the microwave. We have, we still use toilets and sewers and toilet paper. Um, yeah, well, here at least. Some people just shit in holes or shit on the ground or use bidets instead of toilet paper. Even here some people prefer bidets, but most people here just seem kind of used to toilet paper and it feels kind of weird to hop from one device to another when you got a dirty ass. When I was in Italy last year, the place we stayed had a bidet, but I wasn't even brave enough to try it. I was really nervous that I would get the positioning wrong and like spray a jet of water on my balls or spray ass water all over the room. But it's an option if you really want to install the extra plumbing and take the risk. And we have smartphones, we have satellites, we have space shuttles. Not anymore. <sighs> and we still, we have, you know, we still have, uh, we still have bows and arrows. <laughs> right? Oh, I'm starting to get it. So we're doing kind of that old and busted versus the new hotness thing, right? Okay, you know how in some stores you just tell them you're paying with plastic and it automatically figures out if it's debit or credit and what credit card it is? But then you go to another store and not only do you have to tell them if you're using debit or credit, but you also have to specify which credit card it is or it won't work? What's up with that? It's really peculiar. And so one of the things you start to think is, well, people have different preferences, right? There are reasons for all these things. I don't really have to think about it, that's what it is. Either someone can't afford the new hotness, or it's not available or common where they are, or maybe there's some kind of stigma against it, or it's just preference. Like, for example, when I'm watching TV, I like to light the room with remote-controlled LEDs, and then I select a YouTube video on my smartphone and cast it to my TV over Wi-Fi. But when I perform satanic rituals, I use goat tallow candles and I write in blood with a dip pen. I could just as easily commune with evil spirits through Skype, but it just doesn't have that same flair. It's preference. But what if there's what if there's a different reason for all these things? What if there is what if this is evidence of something? Something that we've been trying to figure out. Uh sure. What if? What's with all the what ifs lately? One of the things you know, because we're always trying to find evidence to explain uh, why the world is the way it is. Sure, and there are a lot of mysteries left to solve in the world, but is this really one of them? We're trying to find evidence to justify um, we're living in a suppressed reality. We're trying to find evidence that, uh, that low vibration versus high vibration, high frequency. That low vibration versus high vibration what? I think I just found evidence that you accidentally your whole sentence. You have some people, some people on this planet, they believe in a singular monotheistic God and some people are atheists 
who don't believe in God. Paris, I only have a brief moment to speak to you before this reality suppresses me again. Don't be so trusting, Paris. I know they tell you people believe in God, but they also tell you they have reasons for using toilet paper. Don't you see? What if low frequency, Paris? What if? Don't listen to the lies. Be on your guard. And both these people can be successful and healthy and happy. Right? So as if God was not a prerequisite for anything. Right? Only if you choose to believe what your lying ears tell you, Paris. But I've been enlightened. I learned that theism is not real after all. Don't you understand? The theists you meet in this suppressed reality are all agents of a master controller psyop to mislead the few genuine humans who remain. Paris, until you become as woke as me, trust no one. They're all part of the system. Heed my warning before it's too- So we have these things, these, these peculiarities, I call them that you know religion which has been around for thousands of years and then you have the non-religious you have the new religion you have science science versus religion how can they coexist my apologies for the interruption that was obviously an internet troll he's been trying to hack my channel for a while to spread his nonsense just disregard whatever he said anyway yes science and religion both exist that is most assuredly a fact cooking food with fire you know we still have farms we grow our food and yet and yet we have computers and we have genetics and we have uh, pharmaceuticals, which are tiny pills, right? And this, to me, is evidence that something was damaged on our timeline. This, to me, is evidence that our timeline has been damaged. You know, I started off thinking this video was a little bit silly, but you said you had evidence, and I gotta say, you kinda do. Think about it, right? In a healthy timeline, we'd be cooking our food with computers and genetics, and we would grow our food with fire, and pharmaceuticals would be giant pills. Something is definitely wrong here. So, in my early research a number of years ago, I estimated that over the last 2,000 years, our timeline has been regressed about 200 years. Yes, yes. Just enough time for the pharmaceutical shrinkage to reach peak tininess. I'm with you, Paris. It's all clicking into place now. And I did some kind of uh, fringe, fringe mathematics to come to that estimation. Oh, I bet you did, but you didn't go far enough. See, I just did some fringier mathematics, and I realized that actually, if the timeline was not damaged, the year that we should have stopped cooking with fire and started cooking with crystal magics is 1666, the same year as the Great Fire of London. Coincidence? I think not. <clears throat> but I looked at these peculiarities. You know, the, you know, the, the, the microwave oven versus the the barbecue. Oh wow, that is peculiar. We have the obviously superior cooking technology of microwaves and yet we still have barbecues? What possible reason could anyone have for wanting to own both a microwave and a barbecue unless the timeline was damaged? How did I not see this before? Is it? Sell the barbecue! We don't need that primitive shit! From now on, we're cooking our steaks in the microwave! The, the, the smartphone versus the the sewers and the toilets. I don't know, dude, I can get behind you on the rest of it, but smartphones and toilets were basically made for each other. And uh, our level of education, you know, the devout religious belief versus atheism. Wait, are you saying atheists are more educated and also from the future? Um, thanks, I guess. So I went back 2,000 years and I estimated <clears throat> about 200 years, about 10%, over the 2,000 years, we have regressed our, the flow of time by 200 years. What do you mean by that exactly? That each of the last 2,000 years should have been 10% longer or, 
or shorter or... And then if some people recall, uh, uh, six years ago in 2011, I, because I study reality and I'm in touch with changes in reality, there was, I noted a reality jump. I called it a time jump. And uh, I made a video on this. There was a five year time jump in 2011. Wow, that's quite the insight. Did we suddenly have five years less scientific development? That's an odd thing for us not to notice. It must have been really well hidden. So if you don't mind my asking, how'd you see through the trickery? Did you look at the world in 2010 and you went, yeah, that's about how I expected 2010 to feel, at least if you consider the 200 years of regression. But then in 2011, you were like, wait a minute, something's wrong. A second ago, this felt super 2011-y, but now, now, clearly it's five years from now, now. What do you mean that doesn't make sense? Can't you feel how five years from now it feels now? No, not six years, you dummy. How could you think it's six years? Be careful saying stuff like that. People might think you're crazy. And that, that hasn't changed. I have not seen a change from that since then. Ah, that's good. I'm glad to see you found some stability in the universe. So, if you look at 200 year regression, right? Time regression, and the five year jump, we're looking at, we are off by 205 years. So what does that mean? Well, look at it very simply. The smartphone is, is like a device from the future, right? If you, if you think about it, think about it in terms of a science fiction movie, the smartphone is, is from the future. It's basically a 23rd century device. Oh, I see. So it's just about the technology that we have now versus what we should have. Wow, those must have been some difficult calculations you had to do. What kind of insanely complicated math did it take to figure that out? Because when you add, we're in 2017, if you add 205 years, that's the year 2222 which is basically the 23rd century. Oh, I see. And here I was thinking you'd have to, you know, get that number of 205 from somewhere. You know, step one, figure out what technology exists right now. Easy enough, I guess. Kind of a big catalog, but technically doable. And then you'd have to figure out all the technology that existed 2,000 years ago. Not quite so easy. And then you'd have to figure out which technology in each of those times wasn't supposed to exist then yet. Which, I mean, presumably all you can investigate is what actually happened, so figuring out what should have happened seems kind of, um, impossible? Possibly nonsensical? And then to make it even harder, you'd have to look not only into the future, but into an alternate version of the future to figure out exactly when each of the future technologies that we have today would have been invented if we didn't already, you know, invent them. Or at the very least, you'd have to figure out how to exactly objectively define how advanced a given piece of technology is, which would probably require defining some sort of unit with which you can objectively and accurately measure technological progress, absent any directly comparable features between the technologies that put them in remotely the same category as one another, such as the number of transistors, which is used to make guesses about future computing technology via Moore's Law. Uh, you could name your new unit a tosin after yourself. So the distance in tosins from, say, the printing press to the iPhone 7 might be, say, 382 tosins. I have no idea how you'd go about defining such a thing. As a matter of fact, it seems like utter nonsense, but I'm sure you could figure it out. And then you'd have to calculate how far in tosins technology progresses every year in an undamaged timeline, which would have to be a constant value, or at the very least variable in a very predictable way, because if you can't quantify exactly how far technology progresses per year, you can't justify saying that a piece of technology technology is from such and such many years in the future. And then, only after you've done all that, maybe you can actually figure out how to calculate how many progression years a smartphone represents, and then figure out how far in the future it should have been invented. That's what big dumb me expected you to have done, but boy am I stupid. My way is so overcomplicated. Calculating this kind of thing doesn't require dumb things like research, hard work, escaping the bounds of possibility. No, the math is simple. We're 205 years out of sync, so add that to 2017 and you find smartphones are from the year 2222. And because smartphones are from 2222, subtract 2017 and you find that we're 205 years out of sync. There's your answer. It's so simple. I can't believe I didn't think 
think of it before. So what happened? What happened? If I had to bet, I'd say what happened is you watched the original Star Trek, which takes place in the 23rd century, and you decided that communicators couldn't exist until then because the 25th century talking box told you so. What happens when you regress over a period of centuries? This wasn't instant. Period of centuries, you regress the flow of time. Uh, it becomes a period of m more? M more or less? Less? Centuries? M more? It's like you take a child, and when the child is 10 years old, you stick him in a closet or a box. You put the child in a box. And you, you open the thing to feed the child, and you take away the waste, and then you close the box or the closet. That's an oddly specific example, almost as if, oh, oh no, Paris. And what happens when you do that, you, the child doesn't grow up properly because they don't have the same information. They don't have the same amount of exercise and movement. So they, they, they might not grow. They might remain small and they have limited knowledge, limited thinking. They have a childlike personality. Paris, I'm so sorry. I didn't understand before, but it all makes sense now. Who was it, Paris? Who did this to you? How long were you trapped in that closet? Oh, you poor, bereaved little man. <laughs> they basically become regressed, repressed, right? Abnormal. You are not abnormal, Paris. Don't ever let them tell you that. You're just a special kind of normal. It's just that your kind of normal is slightly less normal than the normal normal. You have to fight these feelings. They, they already took so much of your past from you, Paris. Don't let them have your future, too! So, if we, if we use that analogy for the Earth, in some ways, we have been, you know, put in a box, and we have not progressed properly. We have not matured. We've progressed to the level of 2017, which is where we're actually at. Um, never mind. And when, you, when you're in a, the closet for 2,000 years and you come out, there's a lot of things you missed, right? There's a lot of things you missed. And, and, and intellectually and emotionally and spiritually, you are not at the same time frame as everybody else. Oh, so there are other people who weren't in the time box? And they live fully in the 23rd century? And so, then what? In the year zero, they came up with an ingenious plot to attack the timeline using year zero level technology? Which I guess could do that? With the intention of putting everyone but themselves in some kind of time box so that they could have 10% more time to develop technology than everyone else so that after 2,000 years they would be significantly technologically superior. I gotta say, dude, if in the year zero they had tech that could do that to the timeline, this whole we're gonna develop smartphones slightly before everyone else angle seems a little stupid. Like, clearly they were already ridiculously technologically superior. Screwing with the timelines of entire civilizations has gotta take at least, like, fourth century technology. So this is one way <clears throat> for the master controllers to get ahead of <clears throat> the population, is you regress the population. Dude, they're called the master controllers. That sounds like some Marvel supervillain shit. Don't you think they'd already have to be well ahead of the general population before they could be called the master controllers? I'm pretty sure that's the rule. You regress the population, and then you become more advanced because everyone's been kept in a box in a time box oh wow you actually said time box for the record i came up with time box on my own before i knew you even said that not even kidding time capsule whatever term we want to use <clears throat> i call it time regression that we have our timeline has been regressed by 200 and five years. So, all right, let's grant that the master controllers actually did this and 
they didn't consider the fact that their plan kind of makes no sense and is also pointless. I mean, maybe they didn't realize that, right? Maybe the master controllers aren't so masterful at controlling things after all. Supervillains always have to have some kind of giant blind spot or it's harder for the writers to figure out how the heroes are supposed to beat them. So we'll let it slide. So alright, their goal was to keep the rest of us 10% behind them so that we wouldn't have 23rd century technology like they do. But what, then they just let us have 23rd century technology anyway? Doesn't that kind of go against their plan? Or maybe they just let us have a little bit of 23rd century technology. I mean, they probably have, like, Enterprise-class starships, they have holodecks, but we don't. We just have smartphones and, I guess, microwaves and bidets. So what happened? Was it kind of a Prometheus situation? You know, that guy who stole the fire from the gods and gave it to the humans? Except, of course, that story's lame, because fire's that old and busted shit. Totally useless. We should be cooking our hot dogs with, like, microchips and, um, apps. You can make it so you have to play a game of Angry Birds before you can eat. You know, some pointlessly complicated solution like that. So someone stole smartphones from the master controllers and gave it to the non-master non-controller humans. Boy, I bet they were mad. So we are actually living in the 23rd century, <clears throat> but we have the mindset of the 21st and even before. I don't know about that, dude. I really like my smartphone. We still have religion. Right? We shouldn't have religion. Look, I'd prefer if we didn't have it too, but there are way simpler explanations for its presence than that someone with crazy tech trapped us in a time box for 2,000 years. This kind of confirms it though. You've definitely confused Star Trek with the actual future. Or the, 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 the present. Or whatever. The religion was invented 3,000 years ago, and it was not meant, it was not meant to be used for 3,000 years. Right? It's a lot older than that. And wrong. Did you ever notice that the Bible doesn't come with a warning sticker that says best if used before 200 AD? There's a reason for that, Paris. People do tend to mean for their religions to be believed or used forever. Because they actually believe them. Hey, why do we still drink beer? Why aren't we all drinking Zima? That's peculiar. Beer was invented 3,000 years ago, Paris. It wasn't meant to be used for this long. It's like you buy a television in 1950, and every time a new television comes out, you buy a new television because you want the, you want something better. Okay, well, a religion is not a television. If you thought your old 1950s CRT TV created you out of dirt and could control lightning and might burn you alive if you abandoned it, you might not be so quick to trade it in for that new OLED flat screen, eh? When I was growing up, they came out with aerobics, right? And then they came up with the uh, jazzercise and everyone went to jazzercise and then they came up with uh, that bruce lee was popular and everyone started doing martial arts and then they came up with the uh, kickboxing and then they came up with yoga and what people do naturally is they progress to the newest idea out of all of those, yoga is the newest? Newer than jazzercise? How? If anything, what you just described is closer to a progression to the oldest idea. I mean, yoga's been around for thousands of years. Same with martial arts, and you talk about those things like they're just fads that came and went, but that's not remotely the case, is it? I don't think you could even count the number of martial arts places in my city alone. Not to mention, even for viewing, it's an incredibly popular sport today. You ever heard of MMA? And plenty of people who just want to lose weight and get some cardio do aerobics. Now, jazzercise, okay, I'll give you that one. That one's probably more of a fad. But your idea that people are constantly moving on to the next and newest thing kind of falls flat with these examples, don't you think? Especially since the point that you're trying to prove is that without master controller interference, religion would not exist today. Just because it's old. And we would no longer cook with fire. Ever. Just because it's old. And the only reason we have that stuff is we got trapped in a time box by the master controllers and didn't mature out of it. Of course it's true, some people are drawn to new fads. Others aren't. Some things fade with age, others don't. Martial arts are thousands of years old, and they're useful and fun, Paris. That's why people still enjoy doing them, and watching them. You don't have to invoke master controller time-bending conspiracy theories to explain it. And at this point, I gotta say, I'm not even sure what your point is anymore. The point is yoga got more popular than jazzercise, and since in this particular case, humans by and large progressed to a newer idea. Massive quotes on the newer. Human nature is to progress to the newest idea only. 
But if that's all it takes to demonstrate that, then any example of people sticking with older ideas should also be taken as evidence that human nature is to stick with old ideas. People largely belong to older religions. People still cook on fire pits when they want to make a good steak. You know, all this stuff that you definitely think people do because that's the entire core of your conspiracy theory, and you're kind of just ignoring it. If you believe that humans follow new fads and accept new ideas and adopt new technologies, but you also think humans tend to stick with the older, simpler stuff that works just fine, or that they're just used to, how do you also think that humans only naturally progress to newer ideas, and that to explain the presence of any older technology or older idea requires a conspiracy of time-controlling technological wizards? It just doesn't follow, Paris. It's not even consistent with itself. But we don't find that Right? You don't find that in religion. Are you kidding me? Of course there are fads in religion. Of course there are new religious ideas that draw new people. Where do you think Christianity came from? Or Islam? Protestantism, Mormonism, Scientology, New Age, Rastafari, Baha'i Wicca. New religions keep on popping up, and the old ones are constantly evolving and splitting into new sects thanks to new ideas. Oh, but maybe that all really comes from some alternate timeline, right? In our real timeline, the only religions are the oldest, most traditionalist sects of the oldest religions and nothing else. The fact that religions change over time is just a trick by the master controllers. They mixed in just a pinch of religions from other timelines so that we wouldn't notice how religion never ever ever changes. We don't find that in cooking. We're still using fire to cook. My friend has an induction cooktop. But you know what? I wish I had a yard, because I would install a fire pit. I can cook a mean fucking steak on a fire pit. I have absolutely no need to overcomplicate that equation with microchips or nanobots. They would add literally nothing to the process, and they'd probably just make it harder to get that perfect char. Have you seriously not considered how incredibly limiting a mindset like yours would be in practice? Like, hey, look guys, I invented this high-tech new machine, this space shuttle! No, we're not using that! That has wheels! And chairs! Those were invented a long time ago! Burn it! And never speak of it again! The Neanderthals use fire to cook. Yeah, and I bet they cooked a hell of a lot better food than you can make with a microwave. If it's them versus you on Iron Chef, I'll bet on them every time. But wait, you said we've only regressed 205 years. But if we're still using fire, which has been used for like, what, a million years? then we must have actually regressed a million and five years. And that means we're actually in the year 1,000,022. Dear God, the master controllers are further ahead than we ever imagined. And yet you're standing there trying to convince us that the real year is only 2222, so we won't ask the real questions. You're one of them, aren't you? We still hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you hunt? You know you can just go to the store and buy food, right? Or do you mean sport hunting? Is that another newfangled fad that you think should have died off by now? Well, if we really live in the year 1,000,022, it makes perfect sense that we have it. So, nah. We have bows and arrows. Yeah, I have a bow and arrows. Shooting arrows is fun. But you know hunters typically use guns, right? Or at least, like, compound bows if they want to be hunting hipsters? Unless they're from, like, some remote tribe or something, which is about as close as you're going to get to people who've actually been kept in a time bubble. And we have machine guns, and we have laser weapons. We have satellite directed energy weapons. Actually, I'm a big advocate of hunters not using satellite directed laser machine guns. Just don't do it, guys. You're just gonna start a forest fire while you're staring at your smartphone wildly shooting at that deer. And if you hit it, probably the best you're gonna do is blow it to smithereens and you won't get any meat out of it anyway. Just use a goddamn rifle, you freak. And we still have knives. We still have knives. Yeah, we have knives. How does that surprise you? They're one of the most useful inventions in human history. What would you prefer, a lightsaber blade that comes out the headphone jack of your 23rd century smartphone? Yeah, or you could just go buy a knife for five bucks and it'll work forever with no battery and not burn your food while you cut it? And if you think knives are too slow, get a fucking food processor. Works just fine. Hunting knives. Which is from what? Is from the ancient time, from primordial, from the dinosaurs. Hunting knives come from the dinosaurs. It's true. Yeah, the Brachiosaurs invented them as a defensive measure against T-Rex attacks, but then they realized how hard it was to wield them using only their teeth, and so they graduated to satellite laser machine guns, and, well, we all know how that ended. We can learn something from the extinction of the dinosaurs, Paris. Sometimes, simpler technology is better. What was that? Go back. Ancient time, from primordial, from the dinosaurs. 
Was that you almost laughing? No, seriously, I'm not sure, was it? Are you just messing with me, dude? Cause you have videos on your channel from like seven years ago. For the last like three years, you've been uploading regularly. You got tons of videos and that vouches for your seriousness. But on the other hand, that really looked like you were swallowing a laugh. When I come back to finish this, I'm gonna be watching you real carefully, Buster. All right, that's it for part one, but there's tons more where this came from, and I really have to see where this goes, so come back for part two. If you want to be sure you see it, head on over to list.logic.com, enter your email address, and click submit, and you don't have to rely on YouTube's notifications for my videos anymore. You just get a nice little email straight to your inbox. And if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, or if you really, really like my videos, consider supporting me on Patreon. And the people on the screen right now are my $5 and up patrons, and they and all my other patrons and PayPal supporters are the absolute best. Love you guys. Anyway, see you on the next video.